Hello and welcome to section 2.7 on limits involving infinity. In this section, we investigate the two ways in which infinity can occur within a limit. A limit has three components, the function f, the value a, which x approaches, and the limit, the value f approaches when x approaches a, if it exists. Infinity can occur at the input or the output of a limit. Infinity is an input for the limit if x doesn't approach a value, but grows larger and larger indefinitely. We say that the limit of a function as x approaches infinity is L if we can make f as close to L as we like by taking x large enough. Infinity occurs as an output for the limit if f doesn't approach a value when x approaches a. f grows larger and larger the closer x gets to a. We say that the limit of a function as x approaches a is infinity if we can make f as large as we want by taking x values appropriately close to a. For example, the inverse function y equals 1 over x has limit 0 when x approaches positive or negative infinity. It has limit positive infinity when x approaches 0 from the right and negative infinity when x approaches 0 from the left. If we want a y value smaller than 1 tenth, then we need to take an x value larger than 10. If we want a y value smaller than 1 millionth, then we need to take an x value larger than 1 million. We can continue to find smaller positive y values by choosing larger x values. Therefore, we can estimate that the limit as x approaches infinity is zero. I can't emphasize enough that infinity is not a number and does not have direct algebraic properties. Infinity represents an unbounded quantity. Think of it this way. Can you place a value on the amount of chocolate you'd like to eat? Well, I couldn't. I want an infinite amount of chocolate. That doesn't adequately describe the quantity of chocolate I want. It just describes an unbounded trend. Offer me a pound of chocolate, and I'll request more. Offer me two pounds of chocolate, and I'll request more. I cannot put a limit, I cannot put a cap on the amount of chocolate I want. Infinity is a concept that describes a trend, not a number. Computer screens, chalkboards, and paper are deceptive. When we look at the graph of a function, it is easy to forget that the Cartesian plane expands infinitely in every direction. We are too focused on relatively small numbers. An asymptote to a function is a line which behaves like an extreme end of that function. Notice as we zoom out, letting the x values get larger on the right and smaller on the left, that the blue and red functions get very close together, but they never actually meet. The red function is a horizontal line y equals 1, and the blue line is a rational function. We say that the line y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote for the rational function, because they get very close together as x gets larger. In fact, the limit of the rational function as x approaches infinity is 1, a fact we will be able to calculate with techniques developed in class. A horizontal asymptote to a function f is a horizontal line y equals l, where l is the limit of f as x approaches either positive or negative infinity. A vertical asymptote to a function f is a vertical line x equals a, where f approaches some infinity as x approaches a from either the left or the right side. Functions can have any number of vertical asymptotes, but either 0, 1, or 2 horizontal asymptotes. Let's look at a few common functions with interesting asymptotes. Exponential functions have no vertical asymptotes, and only one horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. The limit as x approaches negative infinity is 0, and the limit as x approaches positive infinity is infinite. Logarithmic functions have domain between 0 and infinity, so there is no approaching negative infinity. However, as x approaches 0 from the right, the limit is negative infinity, and the limit as x approaches positive infinity is infinite. Absolute valued logarithmic functions have even symmetry, so the limit as x approaches either infinity is positive infinity. The two-sided limit as x approaches 0 is negative infinity. Sine and cosine don't have any horizontal or vertical asymptotes because they are periodic, repeating the same values every 2 pi units. Tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent have no horizontal asymptote as they're periodic, but they do have an infinite number of vertical asymptotes. In class, we will delve deeper into limits and infinity and develop techniques allowing us to calculate horizontal and vertical asymptotes. You've seen the basics. Now gain mastery through practice and study.